Welcome LifePoint Church to LifePoint Online. My name is Ethan Whiteside. I'm the visual arts specialist here today. You are? I am Cindy Whiteside. I'm the groups director here at LifePoint North Raleigh. Hey, Ethan, um, guess why I wore this sweater today? Uh, something about Christmas. Uh, you are so smart. Actually, it's because I wanted to be present, Ethan. Right, I want right. to be present in this online service, Should've and we known. want you to be present as well. Join us in singing along. Jump over in the chat. Um, why don't you just tell us what's the best Christmas present you ever received? Go ahead and do that right now. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, we want to invite you to try five. Mm. It can take more than one try to decide about anything new, and so we hope you'll continue to join us over the next five weeks. And as an incentive, when you finish Try 5, we will donate $25 to one of our community partners on your behalf. So just by trying five, you'll already be joining us on a mission to impact the community. So be sure to let us know each week as you move through, move through Try Five on your Connect card. Oh, and speaking of that Connect card, we'd love to get one from everyone worshiping online with us. If you're in the chat, um, we'll post the link there. Just click on that link, or you can scan this QR code with your phone and download LifePoint's app. You'll find the Connect card there as well as other great resources for getting connected at LifePoint. Right, right. Our Christmas teaching series called foretold continues today with a message from our lead pastor, Donnie Williams. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and worship through song. Hey Life Point, 12 months ago, I prayed for the year ahead of us. I knew that this was gonna be a year of rebuilding after all that our church had experienced in the previous year. And over the past year, God has shown up like He always has. 
Because of your hard work and the dedication of our staff and faithful volunteers, we've seen 246 new families come to our church. And our youth ministry is at record numbers with over 200 students attending. That shows me that God is raising up a generation to follow Him. We've also refined our online services to serve those who have not yet connected in person. Our online team has done a great job making that happen week after week. This year, we also sharpened our focus for greater community impact. We developed five key long-term partnerships, and those partnerships aren't just financial, they're also an opportunity for you to serve in your city right where you live. Your generosity has moved our mission forward. In a time of financial uncertainty, you stayed committed to the mission of helping people connect with God, and it's made a difference. We've stayed committed to planting new churches and serving our city and helping those in need in our church and in our city, and also stayed committed to future projects that will help us continue to be a light right where we are. LifePoint, I believe that our most productive years are ahead of us. God has shown us His faithfulness over and over again. That's why I'm asking you to do two things. One, be a part of Sunday morning, January the 9th. That's the day where I'm gonna talk about our vision for 2022 and how God is leading us to be more devoted followers of Jesus and to own our faith. I'm gonna talk about what all that looks like on January the 9th, so don't miss it. And I'm also asking you to continue to be generous towards our mission of helping people connect with God. You can give a year-end gift or your regular gift today in person or by using our app or going to the website. I believe our best year is yet to come and I can't wait to experience it with you. Well, I've noticed this habit in my life. I start a lot of emails with this phrase, sorry for the delay. Or many of my texts, I end up saying, I, I don't know how I missed this one. You can probably relate to that. And it's not that we don't want to respond. It's that in the middle of appointments and meetings and writing and errands and commitments, sometimes things just slip and we miss an email or a birthday or a dinner or an appointment or a text. That leads me to the question, why do we let ourselves get so hurried that we miss the things we shouldn't miss? Now, this is our week leading into a big celebration, a celebration of buying people things they don't need, going places we don't really wanna go, checking our watch to see if it's time to leave yet. Now, that may be your reality, but it doesn't have to be. You can change that. You know, one of the questions I get asked as a pastor over and over again is something like this. Donnie, how do I hear God's voice? And it's usually about a particular situation in somebody's life, but people want to know, how do I hear God's voice? Here's what you need to know about God's voice. It's available to everyone, but you're going to have to go at a pace so you can hear it. Now, this is nothing new. It's always been that way. It's not just a modern problem with all of our modern conveniences. Even thousands of years ago, people struggled with the busyness of life. It's like we're drawn to it. It's like human nature to be drawn to the busyness, no matter the time, the place, or the culture. And we're in this series called Foretold. And what we're doing is looking at the promises or prophecies that we're told hundreds or even thousands of years before Jesus Christ was born. Prophecies about a Messiah, his birth, the times surrounding his birth, all foretold long before Jesus was born. And the prophecy we're looking at today is a simple one. It's found in the book of Psalm, chapter 72, verse nine. It says this, Desert nomads will bow before him. Enemies will fall before him in the dust. Now, if you're just reading the Psalms casually, you may never realize this actually is a prophecy about the birth of Jesus. It was fulfilled in the announcement of the birth of Christ. Have you noticed how announcements have changed? I mean, social media has brought with it a change in how we make announcements. I mean, when somebody gets asked to a prom, it's got to be a creative way that's, that's Instagram worthy. And engagements, they have to be perfect. So the lighting is just right. And you've got the right filter. So the picture will pop and the ring's going to shine. And did you really work out if you don't post a pic of you at the gym? 
And birth announcements are no different. When I see the creative, cute, sweet, and funny birth announcements today, it makes mine and Cinda's VHS recording we made when we were expecting our first child and wanted our parents to know about it a thousand miles away. Uh, we wanted them to be surprised. And what we did, we sat on a couch with a VHS cam corner and one of those big tapes. And we told them we're having a baby. Took the tape out, boxed it up, mailed it home to the family. And that's how they found out. But today it's quite different. And today's prophecy, it's fulfilled in a birth announcement. And that announcement is recorded in the New Testament book of Luke, chapter two. And I'm gonna read from verses eight and nine. It says this. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. See, years before it was foretold that shepherds would be involved in the story of the Messiah. And here they are doing what shepherds do, going about their daily, nightly routine, but getting ready to experience something they never thought they would experience. Now, it's significant that Luke mentions that it was shepherds living nearby, keeping watch over their flocks as these angels, messengers from God came to make this announcement. If you're God's marketing manager, this is an odd choice for the first group of people to hear the announcement about the birth of Christ. So he's getting ready to tell them all about the birth of Christ and what they need to do. This is an odd group. If you're thinking about, we gotta get this message out to choose to share the message about the birth of Christ. Because shepherds, they didn't have any money. They didn't have any social status. They weren't educated. They didn't live in the suburbs. They didn't have an SUV in the garage, no beach house. They weren't necessarily innovative. They didn't even fit in in most places. In fact, historically, we know that all the shepherds in the first century in that area lived a very, very simple life. If we were marketing the birth of Jesus, I mean, we would be going to, to the wealthy, to the influential, to the social media giants to make sure this birth announcement was successful. But our ways are not God's ways. He goes to these shepherds. I wanna look a little closer because uh, it's easy just to pass over. Okay, he told shepherds about the birth of Jesus, but there's something much deeper going on here. These shepherds that we read about in Luke chapter two, they're called Bedouin shepherds. Now, Bedouin simply means desert dweller. Now, people look at them and think, well, that's an odd way of life. And maybe the closest thing today in our culture uh, might be looking at the Amish and how they live a very different kind of life or, or somebody who lives, have chosen to live off the grid without all the conveniences that we love. Uh, they were just sort of out there, looked upon like, yeah, they're a little odd, and they were just forgotten. I mean, nobody aspired to change their current career and become a shepherd. Because shepherds in that day, they were considered less smart than everyone else. They were accused of theft and vandalism. Everybody looked down on them, and they looked at them with suspicion. The first century culture considered them to be sketchy and criminals. They weren't even allowed to testify in a court of law. Really, they were the outcasts and they knew it and everybody else knew it and that's just how things were until this night that's recorded in Luke chapter two. This is what a shepherd's day would have been like. Before the sunrise, they would be up to start their day. All day would, they would be working with their sheep, moving them as they graze and drink and get sheared and ensure they're being protected all day until it got dark then they come back into the pen as the sun sets. Each family would gather in their tent for dinner. Then a typical evening would be a few hours of just sitting with the family and sharing stories, sharing scripture and singing together. Now, if you're a teenager, does that sound like a lot of fun? Well, that's what they did. Every day, day after day for life. A quiet life full of tiring days and quiet, restful nights. So those shepherds are still there today if you go to that part of the world. Even today, a couple thousand years later, after we read about these shepherds, Bedouin shepherds have a life expectancy of over 100 years. I mean, who's laughing now, right? 
That's three decades beyond the regular life expectancy of everybody else. Now, if that doesn't go make you buy some sheep and head out into the country, I don't know what will. So what does that have to do with prophecy? Well, God knew their lives. Hundreds of years before the night we're reading about in Luke 2. And maybe, just maybe, God chose them because they were the only ones who had positioned their lives to hear from him. I don't know if that's true, but I do know this. My availability for God is related to how much I hear from God. My availability for God is related to how much I hear from God. Now, as you move through a busy season, how's your availability? It's probably like mine, not good. One of the things that affects our availability for God is this. It's one word. If you're taking notes, write it down. Noise. Noise affects my ability to hear from God. You should write that down too. Noise affects my ability to hear from God. It also affects a lot of other things. Here's what the Southern Medical Journal says from a Harvard University study. It says this. Noise is often interpreted as danger signals by our brains. These signals provoke a stress response in the body, which releases a number of hormones. These hormones are responsible for spiking blood pressure, increasing heart rate, and even depressing the immune system. Over time, these stress responses have an impact on the cardiovascular system. Lack of sleep and annoyance caused by noise can also raise stress levels, which is another risk for heart disease. And they also found that you don't even have to be consciously bothered by noise for it to have an effect on your life. Even while we sleep, we can be subconsciously processing noise and releasing stress hormones. Right now, if we're quiet, we can hear something. I can hear a camera moving on a little pulley back and forth over beside me. I can hear uh, the air conditioner can hear the air coming out. I can hear cars out on the street. If you're just quiet for a moment, you can hear the noise that could be affecting your life and your availability to God. Excessive noise in our lives has also been linked to other health problems, both physical and emotional. And here's the biggest surprise as I read through this study. Studies have shown that children who live in noisy homes are more likely to have reduced cognitive and language development. Noise is also known to affect children's learning, reading, problem solving, motivation, school performance, and social and emotional development. Our uncomfortableness with silence and pause is killing us. And in many cases, preventing us from living the life that God has for us, preventing us from hearing from him, preventing us from having the experiences he wants us to have, all because of the noise that we create or tolerate in our lives. Now, noise would have been new to these shepherds we read about in Luke 2. So naturally, they were afraid when this big light, likely a big booming voice, came down from the sky. No wonder it says they were terrified. But with us, God could be speaking around us and we would miss it because of the noise. So here's the context. You have these terrified shepherds And here's what happened next in verse 10 of Luke chapter two. So the the shepherds are terrified and it says, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will be great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. First thing they hear from God when something new that was in front of them that they'd never experienced before, this booming light, this loud voice was this, do not be afraid. This is a good thing and it's gonna bring joy. Now, for us, it's the opposite. They were afraid of the noise and we're afraid of the silence. God says the same thing about us when it comes to the silence. Do not 
be afraid. They were afraid of the noise. We're afraid of the silence. One of the simplest clear words from God is found in Psalm 46, verse 10. And that's where it says, be still and know that I am God. So I've got an exercise for you. This was suggested years ago when I first started struggling with my pace of life and practicing silence. An old pastor told me, you need to read Psalm 46 and you read it over and over. Read that verse and phrase it differently every time you read it and let God speak to you through it. And so when this message ends, I have a challenge for you. Whether you're by yourself or you, if you're with people in the room, go around the room and read it and say it differently. Start out saying, be still and know that I am God. And then change the phrasing, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Let those words from God calm your fears and open your mind and heart to hear from him. And just go around the room and do that or just say it multiple times to yourself if you're sitting by yourself watching this. And watch how the word of God, how its power starts to let you calm your fears, be more open to the silence that's gonna get you in a place where you can hear from God. Let these words make you available. My availability for God determines how much I hear from God. When I'm available and I hear from God, here's what happens. See, well, here's what I need to ask ourselves. What difference am I not making? Because I haven't slowed down enough to listen. Try a quiet walk. There's a couple of apps that, that are gospel-based. And the one I recommend is called the Pause app. Look at the icon on the screen. Go find that in your app store and it'll help you pause, be available and listen throughout your day. Things don't get loud overnight and so they won't get quiet overnight. But imagine you start to implement pausing and quiet into your routine. Over in the chat is a link so you can download that app and it will help you pause and be quiet. Here's the opportunity that came from these shepherds hearing from God. So the angels say, you need to go find Jesus. You, you need to find this Messiah that's been born. And then in verse 15, it shows how God used these outcasts, these shepherds that nobody wanted to be around to make a difference. Verse 15 says, when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. So these shepherds heard from God and they went and told people about it. The least likely people in the world that night were the ones that God used to be the first ones to hear the good news that would be for all people. The dirty, smelly, uneducated shepherds started the night by saying, who, me? I, I'm scared, who is this? But ended the night boldly proclaiming Jesus. You may feel like you're not usable by God and that you're not worthy and nobody wants to hear from you, but God thinks otherwise. You may think you're too busy to slow down or that you've got too much to do, but as we've learned today, the consequences are just too great to keep your loud and busy pace. The consequences are much greater than a missed email or a late appointment. It's rest for your soul and an opportunity to hear from God himself on all the things you're missing out on. The shepherd's pace determine their opportunities and so does yours. You probably will have to plan your silence, but get it however you can. Before you get up from this message, before you turn to the next thing for the day, here's what I want you to do. Take a few minutes and be still and ask yourself, am I going slow enough to hear the voice of God?
What steps do I need to take to slow my pace so I can hear from God? Now, for some, it means to be quiet and to slow down starting right now. For some, it means that you finally say yes to Jesus being the Lord of your life, the Lord of the slowing down, the Lord that wants to communicate with you. And you finally step over the line and say, yes, I want to follow Jesus. If that's you, connect with us in the chat or if you're watching at a on-demand time, just find how to get in touch with us and we would love to guide you through that decision of accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And if you need help slowing down, we're here to help you. We're help, here to help you with resources. We're here to meet with you and help you slow down. Experience the silence that will help you hear from God the way the shepherds did that night. Look, There's good news all around us in the world, but it's hard to see with the world that's bent toward the negative. What if you started slowing and started turning down the volume? I think then you'll start hearing the better news that's out there, that's not addicted to a 24 seven news cycle that just puts it in front of us constantly and it's always the bad. May you enter into this Christmas week with a slower pace a more quiet time. It may make you cancel a trip or gather the kids around and say, we've got to make some changes in our family. We've got to make some changes to our schedule. However you can, get to the silence that your soul so desperately needs. You won't regret it. Have a great Christmas. Hey, thanks for worshiping with us today. Christmas at LifePoint is happening this Friday, December 24th at our physical locations and here online with live chat as well. Yeah, our times for online and carry are going to be both at 5.30 and 7 p.m. North Raleigh will be at 4 p.m., 5.30 p.m., and 7 p.m. And we will not be gathering in person on Sunday, December 26th, but we will replay the online Christmas experience without the moderated chat at our usual Sunday morning times. And of course, the experiences will always be available on demand on YouTube. Oh, Ethan, we're so excited for next year and we can't wait to share with you LifePoint's vision for 2022. So don't miss our Vision Sunday on January 9th, where we'll be sharing our plan for the year. Have a great day, everybody.